Hey there, it's Russ with Simple Booth and Yay Networks to uh, give you a little tutorial today on how to create and edit and customize your app presets. Now you can see we're already logged into the Simple Booth website right now, and uh, of course you have the different selections at the top. Make sure you're in the app presets area, uh, and you'll see probably your most recent preset already here. But we're going to just go ahead and create a new one and we'll just call this uh, the river we're gonna be doing it for a uh, radio station uh, the great thing is if you're uh, doing something similar to what you've done before or you want to use a lot of the settings you've done before you can pick something that you've done before and it will copy all of those settings over um, including anything from the graphics itself to the text in a uh, reply or an email so you can keep all of that and use it again without having to type it and create it every single time but here we're gonna create one from scratch uh, so you go ahead and hit create and now we have a uh, blank area this top part here shared users you generally won't need unless you have uh, more than one photo booth or if you're sharing it uh, with with a different user someone else that has their own login if you have more than one photo booth a lot of times you'll have the same login just more than one license so we'll scroll down here uh, and I'll start to uh, explain what we have going on here the colors section is just the general colors of uh, navigation inside your photo booth. Uh, you, you generally want them to be pretty contrasting so if you're Coca-Cola and you want it to be uh, your color red and white you can pick the actual uh, hex color here or you can just uh, pick an approximate color. Um, for the river their colors are blue and yellow so we're gonna pick kind of a, uh, a bluish here that matches them a little bit. Um, we'll show you their logo in a second but uh, that should be about good. And then uh, we'll actually keep the, uh, the text white because I'm not a big fan of yellow text on top of blue. Um, now down here in the design section, this is where most of your customization is going to happen. Uh, you have several options here. As you can see, the two strip, three strip, four strip, and so on, the GIF, and then the live GIF. Now, if you've ever, uh, if you have an iPhone and you've ever done the uh, live photos, that's basically what a live GIF is. Uh, it'll, the photo booth will shoot a couple seconds uh, and turn it into a GIF. Uh, so people need to be moving pretty fast. Uh, a GIF, on the other hand, will take a couple different frames and stitch those together. So uh, GIF is what we're gonna use most of the time, but you can see the other options that you have here that are not animated. Keep in mind, these are not animated. So the two by two, um, you'll see what those look like uh, in this section here in the preview section. Uh, you can also click on this preview section, by the way, if you wanna see it larger. Uh, give it just a second, and it'll pop up here for you. At least it usually does. There we go. Um, so then you can close out of that. And this, this preview will help to show you exactly what everything is going to look like. Um, now generally, because we want everything to look great across all platforms, we want the crop to be square. That's going to work best for Instagram. A lot of people still don't realize that Instagram supports things more than square, but by default, anything that comes in is square. So. Uh, square is best. You, you probably don't want to have any kind of effect on it. Uh, by default, we have the film effect, but you can keep it normal if you like. Um, we're going to go back here to the uh, GIF and uh, margins, background, corners. Generally, we don't mess with those. I'll, I'll show you what they do, though. The margins uh, change it so there's a little more white around the outside. Um, and then the corners just round, if you do have margins, the corners will round, there you go, the corners will round those. Uh, but yeah, we don't really need those in general. We're gonna do everything uh, that we want on our overlay in Photoshop. Background, again, that's that's white. That's if you have a margin, that's showing what that background is gonna be. Your options are white and black. Uh, GIF speed, we have slow, medium, fast, or very fast. I generally don't recommend fast or very fast. Medium, some people think is even a little fast. Uh, I happen to like medium. Uh, frames, we like to have three frames as well. Uh, if you want to do less, you want to do more, that's up to you. 
uh, just kind of figure out what the people uh, using your booth like uh, and how many people you're going to have using it. Because obviously the more pictures that you take, the more frames, uh, the longer it's going to be to get people in and out of your booth. So uh, we've already created our overlays in Photoshop. Uh, generally, you're not going to worry about logo. Logo, you can, it basically just positions a logo at the bottom. So it's really good for people that don't uh, understand Photoshop, but we're going to hope that you have some basic skills in Photoshop. Uh, so we're going to pick overlay and we've got our, uh, we've got our river overlay two we're going to go with. And so here you can see what it looks like and what the preview looks like. So really we just added the logo in the corner and uh, kept it pretty simple with uh, the blue and the yellow from their logo as kind of a outline to the frame. And so uh, your GIF speed is set, your frames are set, your overlay is set, your margin background we're not going to worry about because we don't have margins on this. Um, and so that's the basics of what it's going to look like to the uh, end user. Now on your start screen here, uh, the camera, it's always going to be on the front. And countdown seconds, this is in between each photo. Start delay is before it starts counting down. So even if you have this at zero, they're still going to have three seconds before it starts. Um, but we like to give them a couple extra seconds at the beginning to uh, tap the screen and then get set. Uh, portrait is the only thing you're going to worry about here because you're going to keep your iPad always in portrait mode, not in landscape mode. Uh, so we're going to go to river start screen and you'll see this load in here in just a second um, and that'll work as your start screen and it, and it has instructions on it. I'll show you real quick uh, on a large version what that river uh, start screen looks like and so uh, this is kind of a best practices of what you want to add to your start screen. So we like to tell people it's an animated photo booth. It takes three photos in this case because we selected three. Uh, make a new pose each time and tap anywhere to start. Uh, the entire screen acts as one big button so you can create, uh, so you don't have to specify a specific button or you can create a virtual button in Photoshop. So uh, now that we've got the start screen loaded, the edit screen appears to the user after they've taken their three photos in this case um, and lets them customize it however they want. Now in our case we don't want to give them a lot of options to slow things down and confuse them about all these different things so I like to leave GIF speed tool on. Uh, I like to take off effects because they can add their own effects, they can add their own filters in uh, you know even Twitter supports filters now so uh, we don't want them to change the crop from square background tool we're going to take off, shuffle tool we're going to take off, and swipe layouts we're going to take off. Um, send options, very simply we'll show you about, uh, about galleries in a bit, but if you're creating this first, if you're creating this first, you'll, you won't have the gallery associated with it yet, so you can leave it at default. Um, but your sharing options, email and text, you always want to have those on. Those are pretty much your standards. Uh, Instagram, most people are logged into their phone already, so we can leave this off. Uh, and then print, if you happen to connect it to a wireless printer, you can have it either auto print or have a print button. Um, but most people watching this are probably not going to be printing it. You're going to use it more for social media and the uh, digital exposure. Now in the email section, uh, this is where you can customize what the email says to the user. So uh, if you want to keep your photos ready, that's fine. Or if you want to say your photo is ready from uh, the river, something like that. And then you can have the name of the radio station here, 105.5, the river. Uh, thanks for taking your photo at the event. We hope you enjoyed the photo booth. This is an area here, by the way, you can include any kind of HTML you would like. Uh, if you want to paste, if you just want to make something bold, you can add simply uh, bold such as that, uh, or you can add logos in here. Uh, anything needs to be pasted as HTML though. You can't just drag and drop logos in here or upload logos directly here. Uh, and then this from email you can change, but there's some configuration. If you, uh, if you try to change it, it'll explain that. Uh, a little more in-depth. We're not going to discuss that right now, but um, text messaging. 
share your photo from Simple Booth. We're going to change that to share your photo from the river. Uh, and then save options down here if you'd like uh, the camera roll on the iPad to save individual images. It does take up more space. Leave that checked. Otherwise, uncheck that. I would say uncheck that in general. And one thing you'll notice every time I make a change, right up here it's saying changes saved. So there is no save button. Anything you're doing is updated automatically as you do it. Data capture. Now here is the area you'll want to turn on if you want to collect anything such as uh, email address, phone number, first name, last name, zip code, and date of birth. These areas are not editable, uh, so if you have a, a question you want to ask here, th there's not currently a way to do that. But um, So here, just the default text says join the party and the, kind of the fine print, enter your details to be part of our exclusive programs. So if your legal department has something here that uh, you would like, that they would like included, this is where you would put it. Um, or if, let's say, you're doing this with a co-sponsored brand, uh, you would put something in here uh, saying that your information may be shared with the sponsors of the event and you may... Uh, you may receive occasional correspondence, things such as that, especially if you're going to add them to your email list. So you can configure all of that, and then we're just going to turn on uh, email address because that's all we care about at the moment. So now that we're done, uh, that's it. That's setting up your app preset. Uh, check out the next video for uh, information about how to create a gallery and customize the gallery and uh, tie it to your app preset.